Hey, what's up? It's John from Dowie Farm. Just doing a quick video of some stuff that I've got going on. Just some observations around my grow room. I'm uh, working on some of my uh, auto watering tonight. Nice and late, but uh, I got some risers in here I'm doing. And uh, <clears throat> got some Wi-Fi outlets and things like that. And uh, I'm going to go a lot more in-depth on uh, exactly the process and um, the adjustments and tweaking and all that stuff that is involved in that system in a different video um, that I'll probably post on some sort of a subscription-y type, very inexpensive subscription type uh, website where I'll have a lot of information up, but I'll continue to do these videos too. So, just because these ones are more uh, ADHD. <laughs> so I noticed this thing as I was going, this is what made me start to decide to shoot. Uh, here's some cinnamon basil, and if you notice, here the light. If you notice it on this, I mean, you can see the difference, I think, right? From that angle, right? You can kind of see where there's like a, it's much shorter on here than it is here. And um, there, there you go. So, what the ha what happened here was the, uh, I got this light that's kind of whacked out situ or si situation. My, my original lighting on my big unit here. <laughs> big unit. Uh, my big rack here was, uh, I did three because I was trying to save money where I shouldn't be trying to save money and, you know, lesson learned. And then I went to four, right? So I went for each tray, I went with two where I was trying to skip, right? <laughs> and literally trying to save 50 bucks on each one, which is stupid, you know? Um, but what, as you can tell, the way that the light here is in this, uh, this outlet here gets in the way of it. Whereas if I had just done double lights, this outlet wouldn't be in the way. It would run up the middle like it does over here. You know, see? See how it runs up the center? Um, so I would not have this weird uneven growth. And this is like exemplified on this, this uh, cinnamon basil where it's like crazy difference. This part was under the light and this part was not. Um, and it's just like a huge different leaf size, which makes me realize some weird things as you go um, with growing, which is... You know what makes my basil leaves get bigger right it's good to know if you need your basil leaves to get a little bigger it's good to know that it's from that now some of my auto watering over here is failing me um, I've got some mold growth here as you can see we got some serious mold growth on this basil I'm gonna get rid of this tray um, and I get some fuzzy white mushy nasty goopy ugh, kind of mold right and uh, I believe that's it's a combination of too much water in the soil because I do I have this one on a daily uh, water schedule, and uh, the pump on it is not very powerful, so it's taken a while to fill, and my first set of risers that I experimented with were half-inch PVC. Is it half-inch? Yeah, something like, I think it's half-inch inside diameter. Um, and that's too tall, and it takes too long for that to fill, and it takes too long for it to get to a certain point with the pumps, and it just ends up... I mean, clearly in the middle, maybe there's a little more water in that part. Getting these perfectly level is pretty pretty hard to do, although I am working on that with some shims and whatnot, and that'll be all part of that other video. But um, So I cut that back a day, and this one's got some here, too. I'm just going to pull that out. You know, it's not terrible, but so I'm just going to get it dead on it. And, and as I'm pulling this out, I can feel it. It's pretty wet, and it's, uh, you know, it's bad, but... Also, a little thing that happened to me yesterday that I got to work on in this little grow room is um, <clears throat> for the first time in three years, <laughs> the power went out. So that was interesting because some guy hit a pole across the road. Power here is pretty reliable, but uh, I guess if you hit the transformer right across the street, the power actually goes out. <laughs> so I do have a generator for the place, but it was at my house because I just got the second generator because it was a good sale at Home Depot. And... Um, I haven't, uh, you know, put oil in it even yet or test ran it or anything. And it's a nice propane uh, dual fuel situation. But uh, but I did bring over my little inverter generator that's out here outside. I don't know if you can see it. It's raining like a bastard today. It's down here. My little inverter deal. I think it's like 800 watts. And, uh, you know, it, it. I just ended up, I ended up being no air circulation for about six hours. I'm pretty sure that didn't help. And then, of course, I thought I had myself set up, so I left, turned that generator on, and I had some fans moving. I had no air conditioning. I had no dehumidification, 
because that generator isn't going to do that. And uh, I don't have a plan yet in place for the other generator. So I need to do that. That's, I guess what I'm getting at is I guess I need to come here and do a simulated power outage where I go, okay, the power's out. Let me throw the main breaker. And uh, what do I need to do? Where, what's my kit look like with uh, you know a tote full of extension cords and splitters and what's all you know whatnot and uh, starting up the generator and running the stuff that I need to run and seeing if it'll all work you know with the with the four thousand watt deal um, this I mean obviously I won't be able to do everything but uh, I'm hoping for you know lights fans hopefully a dehumidifier maybe. And I do have a portable AC over there that I maybe could run in the summer. In the winter, I would have to probably, at some point, if there was an extended power outage, I would have to run space heaters. Um, just because th these lights just and everything doesn't, obviously doesn't generate enough heat on its own. Anyway, so I need to run that little test. Um, I mean, I know I can do calculations and whatnot, but it's, I might as well just do the live test because, I mean, I got to do it anyway, right? So anyway... That happened, and that's part of the reason I think I have some rot on that basil, because I didn't have dehumidification. I had overwatering. It's been hot in here, and that when you get that kind of mold, it's usually a heat issue. As I learned when I had some mold outbreak problems over the end of winter in February, I had some problems with almost everything. So obviously that's a, a climate or a, whatever an issue in the room. And I found out through talking to my buddy Brad that uh, it the white fuzzy mold thrives when it's hot and I was running at 75 degrees and so I dropped my temperature down to 73, 72. Um, the reason I was running a little hot was because the basil does well but I ended up dropping back down and that did get rid of the mold problem. So among some other things, among some sanitation efforts and whatnot obviously, extra sanitation efforts. Anyway, that's what I got. I've got some cilantro soaking. I'm on down to a dual situation with my cilantro. So I've got this stuff ready to germinate, or ready to plant that's germinated. And I've got this stuff soaking that went in. Uh, it started, it went yesterday with the soak. And I, all I did, I just rinsed it again, just because I was doing that one, so why not? Um, I'm at about a four-day germination. I did that one on Tuesday, I believe. So part of Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Today's Saturday, so you know, four days. It would have been able to plant earlier today. So four days. I soak, you know, I soak and then I germinate for four days. So anyway, I've got some sales drop off a little bit. I got some things that dropped off, like some basil. So it overgrew on me. So I have this giant basil now, and I'm probably just gonna end up losing that. Uh, whatever. I've got some uh, farmers market that I'm doing. It's keeping us busy planting and. Trying to keep crop rotations going is, is the challenge with the limited space. Um, doing a little bit of fodder crop for some people where I'm just doing sunflower, bird seed style sunflower. Um, I'm just growing the shit out of it um, in soil. I'm just, I'm using my broken trays so I don't care if I get them back or not. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Um, don't have too many broken trays, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on how you look at it because they don't break very often. And, uh, you know, out of 600 trays since I started, I've probably broken maybe 50, and if that, in three and a half years. So that's not too bad. And that's usually just me being an idiot <laughs> and dropping them or whatever. Anyway, so that's what it was. Today's sort of my day off. I'm upgrading my Wi-Fi today so I can work on this automated watering. If I get this automated watering worked out tonight, 1 a.m. I still got to plant the cilantro or whatever. Uh, then I can like uh, I don't know maybe kind of not have to come here tomorrow, which would be like a holy crap moment. Football season is a coming. It'd be nice to have a day off and uh, and whatnot. And the wife and I are planning on leaving town for opening day in Buffalo for two days. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We do have the helper. We do have the help, not the helper, but the help that uh, you know comes here and, and works. So. That's good. What else? Oh, some new crops. I did some borage or borage or borage. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, it turned out really well. I highly recommend maybe growing this stuff because there it is. See it? Kind of looks like sunflower. That one went a little short. That was a no soak. And then I got one up here that's, I believe, planted on the same day, but that was a soak and germinate. And I actually over germinated it a little. 
And that is about three and a half to four inches tall now, but it tastes like cucumbers. It's really cool. Um, I despise cucumbers, but um, it's a cool micro to offer, <laughs> you know, something like that that tastes like cucumbers. It's a very different flavor for profile than anything else you're gonna grow. And that's always a, a real struggle for some of us, right? The other thing I grew out wrong <laughs> was this uh, nasturtium. And uh, basically I harvested this yesterday. Now, I don't think it's double growing because here's what I cut, right? But it was so whacked out that uh, I missed a lot of leaves when I cut it. I only yielded uh, two and a half ounces out of this tray and the seed is like $20 a pound. So I'm probably not gonna um, screw it up next time. I screwed it up, I didn't germinate it. I threw it in the dark room and it, um, I forgot about it. <laughs> it got like 10 inches tall. But I got this little second growth, which is cool. I'm just gonna throw that down at home on the ground and let nasturtiums grow everywhere, because those are cool. They're a great companion plant. So uh, when you grow something like that, absolutely don't ditch that in a stupid place. Put that somewhere where it might end up being useful when it grows. Anyway, that's what I got. I got cinnamon basil going. That does okay, it just doesn't sell great. Um, I'd love to be able to get lemon basil rolling in a good status, but I can never get it tall enough. Um, working on some garlic chives, working on some leeks. Nothing special. Just growing a ton of other stuff. Ton of mustards. I get some Osaka mustard going. That's it's good flavor. It tastes a lot like Mizuna. It just looks a little different. It's got like a round leaf. With a little bit of red. I, I'd like to get a little more color out of it. And I think I'm doing something wrong. Is this the Osaka? I know that's what's savvy. Oh, I got too close, man. Here it is. Here's the Osaka. I don't know if you can really get a, a look. That's Osaka mustard from Kitazawa, my favorite seed distributor. It's just got a little bit of a red tint to it, so it's kind of not as red as I really wanted it to be. Um, I've also got some lettuce seed on the way, some Rouge de Ive. I said that for my for my buddy Mark in Quebec. I think it, maybe I said it right. I don't know. I took French too for three years, so I should be able to say that. Um, anyway, that's what I got. Just stuff going on. I want to check in. If you got time, if you feel like clicking through, please support me on. Uh, the Amazon and uh, we're selling trays still we're selling these flats these heavy-duty flats they're nice and uh, strong nice and strong see they're not you can pick them up like this and they don't break which is fantastic it gives you like kind of an idea and those are about what a buck 30 plus shipping a piece if you buy a hundred and I am working on selling uh, in amounts of ten and uh, Crap, I forgot. If you did ask me to ship to Canada or Hawaii, I do actually have a quote for you. <laughs> I just forgot to email you. And uh, I cannot ship internationally yet. Sorry, guys. It's like $400 in shipping to ship to like anywhere. It's $700 to ship to Turkey, just in case anybody wanted to know. Um, but maybe the smaller quantities once I can get them going. Anyway, I, I do think if you're, in, if you're abroad, not in the U.S., um, Maybe uh, looking at Alibaba is probably the best way to go. I don't know how that works if you're on, not in the U.S. So because I'm not not in the U.S. Anyway, that's what I got. Thanks for watching. I know it wasn't a lot of info in this one, but I just wanted to kind of check in. I haven't done a video in a while and uh, kind of give you guys an update of what I'm working on and uh, all that happiness. And uh, yeah, thanks. Take it easy, John from Dolly Farm.